contestant is Tom Jameson. The speech, the worst speech ever given. <laughs> the worst speech ever given. Tom Jameson. Imagine this. You were given the opportunity to be the guest evaluator at a club you have never visited to evaluate a speaker you have never heard. The problem is, it is the worst speech ever given at a Toastmaster club. Come with me, this Toastmaster, as I attempt to give a real evaluation, a real Toastmaster evaluation of Bubba. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and Bubba. I want to compliment you right from the outset for giving a book speech. Oftentimes, Toastmasters are shocked that they don't do their book speeches. They think they're too good to do a book speech, and you came in here prepared to give book speech number three. I came to the meeting early this morning to talk to the other members of the club and find out a little bit about your past experience. Now, on your icebreaker, you came up to the front of the room, shuffled up there, stood there looking at your feet, really not looking anybody in the eye, and stood there, and stood there, and three minutes later, you went back and sat down. <laughs> Now, I want to compliment you on having the courage to face your fears, to go up in front of that audience and stand there and attempt to give your ice cream. Now, your second speech, I think you did a little better on that second speech, maybe. You came up to the front of the room and did a strong handshake to the Toastmaster, looked the audience in the eye, and before your first word, your cell phone rang. <laughs> and you answered it. <laughs> and four minutes later, you hung up and went back and sat down. <laughs> now, I'm not absolutely sure whether Toastmasters International would recognize that you gave book speech number one and book speech number two. But this is book speech number three. Let's talk about book speech number three. The book speech number three is get to the point, which would have been really good, but I never did get your point. <laughs> but you did accomplish something. You got past that five minute break. You're supposed to speak for five to seven minutes on book speech number three, and I actually stopped counting at 20 minutes. <laughs> now you'll notice in the back of the room, you're new to this, I know, but you're in the back of the room, we have someone who is designated as the timer. They have various colors, green and orange and red lights. When you see the red light, that's kind of an indication you should be winding your speech to a close. Now, if you see the timer, hold the red light up in the air. <laughs> and wave. <laughs> and flash it a number of times. And try to get your attention. It really is a good time to go back, sit on it, and stop talking. <laughs> but let's talk about the rest of your speech. Now, it is important to have a good title. You want to have a title in your speech that grabs the audience, gets them interested in what you're talking about. Your speech title, my speech, didn't really do anything for us. It didn't tell us what your speech was about. So you might think of a little more clever title than that to get our attention. Uh, the next one, we, Toastmasters love humor. We love to have a good joke. Start your speech out with a little bit of humor. The uh, humor that you might think about your audience, knowing your audience a little bit. The humor you chose to use probably would be a little more appropriate today at a union meeting for strip club bounce house <laughs> rather than a Toastmaster meeting. But, and I don't think that anybody really appreciated the, the lyric about the man from that topic. You might want to take that out. <laughs> uh, your, voice, your voice was very, very strong. I have to hand it to you. Important to have the voice that reaches to the back of the room. In fact, I'm sure it did because some of the four-letter words you used were heard in the parking lot because someone came in wondering if there was a fight going on or not. <laughs> so, good point of having a strong voice. Be a little more careful about how you use it. 
Now, appearances, I mean, this is not a fancy club. You don't have to wear a coat and tie to come and speak at this club. The big block letters with the erotic suggestion on your t-shirt <laughs> cause it more than a little distracting and the fact that you are wearing Bermuda shorts without the benefit of underwear and forgot to <laughs> <stuff. laughs> was very distracting. We were appreciative of the fact that you stood behind the lectern the whole time. <laughs> now gestures. We love gestures. We think gestures are so important to a quality speed. Make sure that you use gestures. I think maybe the gestures you chose were more appropriate in a traffic jam on the freeway than <laughs> those gestures. But, but think about Think about that using good proper gestures. Now, I don't know of any club in which they might be accepting or appreciate someone chewing tobacco during the meeting. <laughs> but we did appreciate that you brought a spittoon with you up to the front of the room. Your president, Angie, probably would have appreciated it if you were a little more accurate. In <laughs> I, I think I know a good dry leader that probably can get those stains out. <laughs> so maybe next time leave the tobacco at home. Now we try not to be too critical of content. They say, unless you really know your audience, stay away from those controversial topics like sex, politics, religion. And of course you didn't stay away from sex, politics, and religion. <laughs> In fact, any number of other offensive things you talked about were you brought up. In fact, I really doubt there was really anybody in the room that wasn't offended at one point or another. So <laughs> be very cautious about what content you do. Uh, I would suggest my, my suggestions for the future is that you maybe write your speech, practice it. Uh, if your club did assign you a mentor, correct? Several. <laughs> and they all quit. <laughs> Well, at this point in an evaluation, I would normally say I'm looking forward to your next speech. <laughs> in all honesty, I really can't say that because I don't intend to ever come back to this club. <laughs> and I'm certainly not going to tell you where my club meets. 